Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like at o'clock. And uh, I just got some, I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. It's also my NHL Baseball Pearls of Wisdom. I'm the Canadian Tire. Of, you know how Canadian Tire doesn't just have tires? Well, I don't just have hockey. But primarily, I love me some hockey. You're seeing the screen right now. Yes, you are. You're seeing the screen because Oliver Ekman Larson is in the news big time. Big rumors that he could be going elsewhere. And I got right now, I got it on the Vegas, the Vegas Golden Knights, who are rumored to be uh, looking at trading for him. Now, we have a little problem here. I'm going to go down. I'm going to show you a few things. This is cap friendly, by the way. Cap friendly. It's the best there. I said it. Current cap space, four million. This is the bad thing here. See, Vegas is interested, but they have five million dollars in cap space. Uh, we can go back to uh, let's go to Arizona, who is trying to trade the fellow, and uh, we can see that they have like no cap space. Let's go down cap space, one million. One million. They also have no draft picks because they gave up a whole money, a whole bunch of money to get Taylor Hall that they were probably were not going to be to resign. This has to be one of the worst managed teams ever. They have young players coming up that are going to fill in some holes. But basically, if you trade Ekman Larson off this team, you trade everything. Now the good news is, is next year they've got their whole defense leaving. Pretty much. Uh, then, uh, so they'll be able to fill up that way. Basically, they can start a rebuild now at a time when they probably can't afford to start a rebuild without losing this team. But we'll get into that some other time. It's more likely Arizona is done. You notice here where it says draft picks. Oh, I could probably use my mouse. Why don't I do that? <laughs> Because it's not plugged in. Anyways, you notice here. So, next three rounds, because they did some foolishness where they did some illegal stuff apparently with their prospects and had uh, their draft picks removed um, next year. <laughs> And this year, and also traded for Taylor Hall and gave up their first. So they got nothing. So the, they got to get some cap room. They want to get some cap room, and they're trading Ekman Larson. I have a feeling that when the rumors came out that they may be looking to uh, get some cap room and get some draft picks, Ekman Larson might have been the first to their door to say, hey, you know what? I've been here enough. I'm more than happy to move on. So what teams... Okay, first of all, okay, I'll go to the vet. Vegas has been interested in them. Now, they've only got $5 million in cap space, so they're not going to take all that cap. Uh, they're talking about possibly buying out uh, Marc-Andre Fleury, which you see here. That would be a very expensive buyout. I think for them it would be better to hold some, uh, well, not really expensive, but it would take a long Seven million, it would take them four years to pay that off, and they'd be short like three million, sometimes six million every year on their cap to do that. Their best bet probably is to cover half the salary for the next two years, uh, which would give them about three and a half more million in cap room. But as you can see here, they have some people to resign, not too expensive people. Chandler Stevenson and Nick Cousins, but still with the cap space that they have, still a lot. They probably don't have to worry about John Merrill or Derek England. They move on to greener or other pastures. I don't know if they'd be greener or not. Um, they have Peyton Krebs as a possibility. He has been playing amazing in junior. I'm sure they're going to give him every bit of a chance to come up and play. Um, they do have uh, Nicholas Hag can play on their defense, but this is what Vegas does. Vegas doesn't care about cap room. They care about getting as best team they could possibly get out there on the on out there right away. 
I don't want to screw around and wait, obviously. They've shown that over and over and over again here. So if they were to get Ekman Larson, who is a left defenseman, now he would be playing, they got a lot, Shea Theodore can play right defense, Nate Schmidt. Personally, I don't think they need him, but because they've got McNabb, they've got Martinez, who end up could, could be leaving, but they would have one stack defense if they did this. They're, they're going to have to send somebody back. So let's say they send a little bit of cap room back and send McNabb for one. Then you go up here and uh, they're going to want their first this year. Does Vegas have their first this year? They do. First round draft pick this year. It's not going to be a very high first round draft pick, but it's still very valuable. So that was going to leave them with also having to send over a prospect. And if I'm Arizona and I'm looking at these prospects, I'm looking at Nicholas Hag. I think that's the deal that would have to be there. Nicholas Hag is ready to play. He's a left defenseman anyways. So if you were to acquire Larson, it kind of wouldn't be fair to him. He's ready to play right now, and now you're acquiring somebody to take my spot. So I'm thinking it would be Hag, first round pick. Um, McNabb. Twenty-nine-year-old defenseman. Hag a first-round pick and McNabb. That would likely be it. They might want a little more than that, but I don't know if they'd be able to get it or not. We'll find out if they can get it. So let's look elsewhere where they might be able to go to get. Somebody may want that. Now the Edmonton Oilers have been rumored to get. Them. And the reason why it just came out today is that Cleft Bomb from the Edmonton Oilers is no is talking about getting surgery that could even be season ending surgery. Now he's a right defense or sorry, he's not, he's a left defenseman. More than likely, if they were interested, that's the guy that would have been part of that deal. <laughs> that's the problem there. But let's say we go Caleb Jones. They still got Darnell Nurse, Darnell Nurse on the left-hand side, or they could go with a righty and give them Adam Larson, who's only set up for one more year. Uh, I'd be happy with that, very happy if you could do that. That would be great. I'm an Oilers fan, by the way. So let's go uh, Adam Larson or Matthew Benning. Our first this year is a 14th overall. The Edmonton Oilers' first this year is a 14th overall. Right there, it may better the offer from Vegas as it, is, as it stands. Then we could probably offer up another forward uh, or possibly another defenseman um, like Dmitry Samarukov. I don't know if that's going to really turn the heads of Vegas very much, though, to tell you the honest truth. How about Raphael Laveau? So we're giving up two first round picks. This Raphael Laveau was a oh sorry, was an early second pick round pick two years ago, I believe. He's a big boy. Yeah, he's been putting up some good he's been putting up some good numbers in junior. So we'll give you a Laveau, our first this year, and Benny. So you got a guy on the roster who's still young and still has upside for Ekman Larson. Now, of course problem we have with that is the Oilers have cap issues. <laughs> They've only got 11 million in cap space. They've still got some guys to sign here. Not too bad though. I think we could get away with that. I think we could do it. And honestly, I think that would beat Vegas's offer. Now we'll go back to Vegas's table and they would have to offer something a little more than uh, maybe they already have. Maybe they give two first round draft picks. That would be cray cray as far as I'm concerned. Remember, Ekman, Oliver Ekman Larson did not have a great year last year. He's making $8.25 million. So a team has to believe that that was a one off. And there's a reason to believe that because he's been playing for that Coyotes franchise for quite some time and they've been spinning their heels for a long time. 
it's very possible that Oliver Ekman Larson was getting stale in Arizona. And a lot of GMs would probably view it that way. Even his numbers, like, because um, he has been a analytics darling for quite some time. Even his analytics dropped last time. Now, a lot of things can be taken in, into account there. Uh, Rick Tockett has put a system in that has basically not been a very good possession system. It's it's uh, sit in the in the defensive zone. Just make sure you don't get a quality shots on Kemper and win. I kind of understand why he put why he does it because they really they don't really have much of an offense there. They don't have much and and their defense was getting older. So the best thing they had was Kemper. That way, he went with what he had best. He figured, well, if we're going to win, we're going to win with Kemper, so we might as well make sure he stops almost all the pucks we possibly can get him to stop, help him out stopping pucks. That's kind of what the philosophy was, and I think it really hurt Ekman Larson's stats. Now, there's another team. The New York Rangers I thought about, but I, I think their defense is fine. Uh, Oliver Ekman Larson has a no trade clause, so the odds of going to Detroit or Buffalo or Ottawa or something like that seems un too unlikely for me to even pay much attention to. The Colorado Avalanche, on the other hand, have a crap load of cap space. If they're interested in him, which I'm not sure they would be, they could offer up something like their first round draft pick this year. Ryan Graves, who's a restricted free agent and may be difficult to keep in, expansion, in the expansion draft, uh, and possibly Burakovsky. Burakovsky is almost expendable on this roster. To, now, if they were to offer something like that for Ekman Larson, of course, they would get him for sure. Now, they got tons of cap room. Uh, you can see here, they have tons of cap room that of the uh, 22 million. So they can eat that eight and a half, not bad. They do got to re-sign Landeskog next year. They do have Matt Calvert. Look at all the people that are, are they have to re-sign next year. Tons. I'm sure they could fit it in though. If they wanted to, they could do that and have Ekman Larson be at the, on their left as their left defenseman. Now, if Ekman Larson can get back to where he was before, that would be insane. I love Ryan Graves. Uh, I don't think anybody else would fit here. I don't think they're going to take Nikita Zadorov as much as Colorado may push for that. They would want Ryan Graves here. They would definitely want uh, somebody like um, either Jonas Donskoy or um, Burakovsky, I would be leaning towards Burakovsky. Um, like I said, now you're talking about expansion draft. If you look at Colorado, they got to protect Ranton and McKinnon, Landeskog, Kadri. They probably would take JT Comfer over Burakovsky, and then they have Nachuskin, and you could protect Burakovsky, or you could let him go in this trade and have a fantastic defenseman. Uh, possibly, if he came back to his old self, you're looking at Johnson and, and uh, Eric Johnson, if he can stay healthy, and and uh, Ekman Larson, Samuel Gerard and McCarr, Z keep Zadaroff, possibly. You got They've got young guys like Timmons coming up. Um, they could even offer Martin Cote in this deal. They could do a lot of things to get him. And uh, they have some young players, like I said, of Bowen Byram and uh, T Connor Timmons, who looked great in the playoffs. So they'd still be stacked and be able to pull off this deal. Now, which team do I think it would likely go to? I think Colorado may do this. I think that could be very much the case. Now, Sakic is a very frugal guy. He likes to build within. It's possible that this deal would not make sense to him. But I have a feeling... If that was the package, he would let it fly. I really do. I think Colorado would take it. I don't think the Edmonton Oilers and or the Vegas Golden Knights could could match that. Tell me who you think. Who Have I not come up with somebody here that may be a team that may want that? I know New Jersey would probably be in there. But again, with the no trade clause, 
does Adam Larson want to go to New Jersey? I don't know. Um, this would keep him out west a little bit, so he's a little closer to what he's used to there in Arizona. Maybe his, you know, kids would like to fly, see his, if his kids wanted to fly and see his old, their old friends every once in a while with his money, it would be a short trip, rather not worry about the financial cost, but a short flight and uh, all of those things. These are things that they look at, that uh, players look at when they're making decisions like this. So. Um, that's what I wanted to throw out at you. I'm going to see how this, uh, this whole, uh, screen thing worked out. I hope it works out fantastic because I've really enjoyed it. I hope you have too. Subscribe and bell boys and girls, and we'll do this again sometime. Uh, I'm going to bring out the letters here every once in a while. I've been getting a lot of letters and you should call. We love your letters. Melissa, um, also make sure you subscribe. We'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace. You all know that. Uh, Melissa and Hernandez uh, have been uh, reading the letters. Uh, Guido goes down to the mailroom. He brings up the letters. We read them. And we're going to do a letter segment here right away. But thank you for your letters. Until next time, boys and girls, have a great day. And lots of love to ya.